Hello and welcome to Railroad Journeys Around the World. In this volume, we'll be looking at the distinctive railroads of Austria. Situated right at the heart of Europe and blessed with plenty of spectacular scenery, Austria has always been a very popular destination for generations of people with an interest in railways. For many, the Austrian railway network is best symbolized by the mountainous alpine areas. But as we shall see during the course of this program, Austria has much more to offer than dramatic scenery. The characteristic Austrian network is comprised of a highly integrated system, utilizing both standard and narrow gauge operations. It also features many lesser known but equally interesting areas, including cross-border operations in the east. We'll also be looking at the considerable amounts of narrow gauge freight which still survive against all odds, conveyed on both transporter wagons and narrow gauge wagons. Austria also operates and sees many distinctive international services, giving additional interest to a country already packed with railway appeal. Situated at the centre of Europe, Austria is a natural railway crossroads. A good starting point for any visit is the capital, Vienna, with its highly developed railway system, which includes four mainline termini and an extensive network of local and suburban lines. Vienna is also one of the great tramway capitals of Europe, with plenty of superb street action to interest everyone. In fact, it has the second biggest tramway system in the world, beaten only by St. Petersburg in Russia. The Südbahnhof, or South Station, is served by three separate tramway routes. The original Südbahnhof was flattened during the Second World War and was replaced in the late 1950s by this rather unglamorous building, which is unusual in having two sets of terminal platforms situated at right angles to each other. This train, hauled by a class 1044 electric, is just arriving at the southern platforms on the two hourly intercity service from Salzburg via Villach. Setting out from the southern platforms of the Südbahnhof, this class 4010 unit is forming an intercity departure to Grass and Spielfeldstrasse. Austrian Railways has a fleet of 29 of these six-car intercity electric multiple units, which, despite being introduced 30 years ago, still look up-to-date and modern. One of the busiest freight routes in Austria is the Westbahn main line, which runs for much of its journey along the Danube Valley from Vienna to Linz, and then on to Germany and Switzerland. On this stretch of line, long mixed freights pass through literally every few minutes, many of them destined for Vienna Kledering Yard. Block formations are common too, such as this trainload of petroleum hauled by one of the latest Class 1014 electrics. As far as rail freight is concerned, Austria has one of the most enlightened transport policies in Europe. In particular, there is still commitment to a complete wagon load network. And for those customers who don't happen to have a private siding, there are still literally hundreds of public freight terminals. Here at Zittenberg, the main line has recently been straightened out and diverted through a new tunnel. The old route, visible in the background, which has been retained for local passenger traffic, follows the course of the River Danube and is subject to a number of speed-hampering curves.
parcels and mail traffic is still big business for Austrian railways. The bicycle slogans on these vans are advertising that, unlike in certain countries, bicycle traffic is actually encouraged here. One of Austria's many rural narrow-gauge branch lines is the 54-kilometre-long branch from Zell am See to Krimmel. The branch starts with some unusual dual-gauge track as it leaves the main line here at Zell am See. The first few kilometres from Zell am See to Bruckberg enjoy a comparatively intensive shuttle service, worked by a single Class 5090 rail bus. Through trains to and from the end of the branch at Krimmel are often made up of longer formations. This one has an extra coach at the rear for luggage and cycles. But the Krimmel branch doesn't only carry passenger traffic. As with many narrow gauge branch lines in Austria, there is also regular revenue earning freight traffic, with standard gauge wagons being conveyed on narrow gauge transporters. Locomotive and transporter wagons are coupled to each other by means of rigid connecting rods, which also carry the continuous air pipe to operate the wagon brakes. The cost of underwriting an operation like this is obviously considerable, but the Austrian government is clearly committed to keeping as many lorries off the roads as possible, and a mere change of gauge is no reason to stop using the railway. The Class 2095s are a mixed traffic locomotive, but they're becoming increasingly synonymous with freight as their passenger duties are gradually taken over by rail buses. The standard gauge line through Zell am See follows a sinuous alpine route to Kitzbühel and eventually on to Innsbruck. The local motive power depot for this area is at Saalfelden. Just about to leave the depot is a class 1063 locomotive, one of 50 that can be seen in many parts of Austria on heavy shunting and trip working duties. Despite the obvious complications and extra costs of wiring up sidings and depots, Austrian Railways relies heavily on electric traction for shunting duties. Also stationed at Saalfelden is this interesting snowplow unit, built on the frames of a former 210 steam locomotive. Austrian Railways has some 30 of these units strategically dotted around the network. The main line between Zell am See and Kitzbühel passes through some spectacular scenery, even by Austrian standards. Gradients are severe and many freight trains need to be banked, in this case by a Class 1042 electric. The line provides the only direct Austrian railways link between the Tyrol and central Austria and is therefore extremely busy with both passenger and freight traffic. Heading up the Griesen Pass near Leogang with a heavy westbound freight is a refurbished Class 1010. On this stretch of line, snow is normal any time between late autumn and Easter. Inclement weather is taken for granted in alpine countries and rarely causes the sort of problems for the railway that it does in lower lying lands. But every now and again, a particularly heavy fall will catch even the Austrians out. 
Having said that, the provision of two locomotives rather than one is a useful insurance policy against any failures. This train is double-headed by an unrefurbished Class 1010 and a Class 1044. importance of traditional wagon load freight for Austrian railways can be seen firsthand by a visit to almost any of the country's main lines. The wagons are modern air brake stock and much of the intermediate shunting is mechanized. But the basic principle of sending individual wagons around the network by means of common user trunk trains and trip workings has remained unchanged for many a decade. In Austria, the wagon load network seems to have a more secure future than it does in many European countries. The railway as a mode of transport in Austria enjoys a high level of public support and there would surely be widespread opposition to any proposal for shifting more traffic onto the roads. For a small country with a total population less than that of London or Paris, the tonnage of freight carried by Austrian railways is impressively high, reaching just over 66 million tonnes in 1994. Three quarters of Austrian rail freight is international in nature. This isn't really surprising when you consider that Austria borders onto seven other major European countries. Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Slovenia, Hungary, the Czech Republic and the Slovakian Republic. Much of the traffic on this route via Zell am See runs on an east-west axis, with many trains travelling to and from Switzerland and via Vienna to Hungary on trans-European journeys. As well as wagon load traffic, the line also carries a substantial number of block trains, conveying bulk loads of coal, steel or other heavy industrial products, including stone from local quarries like this train near Hopfgarten. At the western end of the Zell am See route, the line meets the tracks from Rosenheim in Germany. After leaving the border town of Kufstein, Austrian intercity Line 1 corridor trains between Innsbruck and Salzburg take the route via Germany, as it's considerably shorter than the alternative Austrian route via Zell am See. This shorter route is also used by German Eurocity Express trains, like this one bound for Italy. Intercity services in Austria follow a regular interval timetable, providing an hourly service on most main lines. This particular line through Zell am See carries heavy tourist traffic and trains are well loaded for most of the year. Not all trains on the line are locomotive hauled. Some local services from Salzburg to Virgil are worked by class 4030 units. Today, many of the intercity services on this trans-alpine route are hauled by Class 1044 traction, making use of their superior haulage ability compared with the older 1042s. The Class 1044s were built in Austria, but were a development of the Swedish-built Class 1043 that we saw working on the Tauern line.
while the Class 1042s are largely restricted to local passenger duties, such as this old station service from Salzburg to Virgil, as well as working a range of freight duties. One of the main visible differences between the two classes is that the 1042 has a row of square windows and grills on its upper body sides, in place of the circular windows on a 1044. This class 1042 is unique in having been repainted in its original dark green livery. The repainting was carried out in 1987 as part of the celebrations to mark the 150th anniversary of Austrian Railways. One of the best known and best loved private railways in Austria is the narrow gauge Zilla Talbahn at Jenbach, which is easy to reach by both mainline train or by car from the adjacent motorway from Innsbruck and Munich. The 760mm gauge branch runs from the mainline junction at Jenbach to the Alpine resort of Meierhofen, a distance of 32 kilometers. This unit has the power car at the rear and two unpowered trailers at the front. The passenger service runs hourly throughout the day and is well used by both local people and tourists. Although it's a privately operated line, the trains appear in the National Austrian Railways timetable and connections are kept with mainline trains at Jenbach. Like many state-owned narrow-gauge lines in Austria, the Zillertalbahn carries freight as well as passengers. At Jenbach, standard gauge wagons are transferred onto narrow gauge transporters for the final part of their journey. The ingenious use of a steel hawser allows the narrow gauge loco to move the standard gauge wagons as well as being able to couple up to the narrow gauge transporters. For this stage of the process, the transporters are coupled together in a continuous rake so that several wagons can be loaded at once. The destination for these particular wagons is Fugenhardt, one of the intermediate stations on the branch with a private siding. After each standard gauge wagon has been loaded, the transporters can be pulled apart and spaced out into their travelling positions. It's normal for bogey wagons like this one to have one transporter per bogey. This ingenious handling system is potentially very dangerous for the crew, who have to work close to the moving wagons as the train is assembled. An essential final part of the process is the coupling up of the train air pipe. Without this, the train would have no brakes. Fugenhardt is only 11 kilometers from the mainline junction at Jenbach, but the use of transporter wagons is still preferable to using road transport for this last leg of the journey. This is a particularly attractive and popular tourist area, and the government has the sense to realize that while the local mills are essential for employment, a daily fleet of lorries blocking the roads would hardly be popular with anyone. Shunting operations are surprisingly brisk, and unloading commences only a matter of minutes after the wagon has been correctly positioned. Innsbruck is the railway centre of Western Austria, with main lines radiating to Salzburg, Bregenz and the Italian and German borders. The international flavour of Innsbruck station is enhanced by the frequent visits of foreign motive power. This German Class 111 is heading a train from Innsbruck bound for Munich via Garmisch Partenkirchen.
An interesting visitor to Innsbruck, considering that all lines around here are electrified, is this Class 2043 diesel. In fact, this corridor train which is arriving at Innsbruck is from Lienz via Italy, and diesel traction is used throughout in order to avoid the problem of different electrification systems in the two countries. Innsbruck station occupies one of the most spectacular settings for a mainline station in Europe and is dominated by the snow-capped peaks of the Nordkett. The route heading west from Innsbruck on the Arlberg main line to Feldkirch and Bregenz is used by international trains between Austria and Switzerland, as well as by some trains to and from Germany and France. From the cab of our Class 1044 locomotive, we can clearly see the recently doubled line on the section through the valley of the River Inn. Although it's an international main line, there are still lengthy sections of single track. The electrification of this stretch was completed back in the mid-1920s, and until quite recent times, some of the original locomotives built for the line were still in use. One of the many major engineering feats on the Alberg route is the Trisano Bridge, a few kilometers above Landeck, universally known as the Trisano Brücke. No sooner has the line crossed the Trisano than it disappears into the first of several major tunnels on the Alberg Pass section. The costly job of upgrading the Alberg Pass section to double track has started, but this will take many years to complete. The daily Transalpine through service from Basel to Vienna, with its use of Swiss panorama cars, ensures passengers will enjoy the breathtaking scenery to the full. Perhaps one of the best known of all alpine routes in Austria is the Brenner Pass. It provides the main railway link between Western Austria and Italy and also carries substantial amounts of through freight and passenger traffic between Germany and Italy. The Brenner has a ruling gradient of 1 in 37 and it's not uncommon for the heavier trains like this one to be both double-headed and banked. Even the less heavy freight trains tend to be double-headed. This pair of Class 1044s will have remained in charge of their train all the way from Germany to the Italian frontier station at Brennero. For much of that journey, a single locomotive would be sufficient, but it makes diagramming more straightforward to double-head all the way through, and it also saves time by cutting out the need to stop and attach a banker at Virgil or Innsbruck. Near the attractive village of Saint Yadoc, it's possible to let the action literally unfold right around you as the train dives into a tunnel at the head of the valley to reappear on the opposite side of the valley a few minutes later, travelling in the opposite direction. Intermodal traffic too is a heavy user of the Brenner route. This working conveys a typical mixture of containers, swap bodies and unaccompanied road semi-trailers. Although the Brenner route is used primarily by long-distance traffic, the Class 4020 units shuttling between Innsbruck and Brennero provide an hourly all-station service for most of the day. Only two of the seven intermediate stations are staffed. At the others, tickets must be bought on the train. The destination blind is bilingual because the border town of Brennero has both Italian and German as official languages. Mm -hmm. 
In the north of Austria, the town of Gmünd is home to two narrow-gauge railways as well as an international main line. Czech diesels work into Gmund station on both freight and passenger duties. The recently installed overhead wires at this point are used only by Austrian electrics running round their train in Gmund station. The wires don't extend as far as the Czech border, which is literally only a few hundred metres away. Looking somewhat smarter than the freight loco is this Czech class 754 on a cross-border passenger working to Gmund. A few minutes later, it sets off again with a through working from Gmünd to Prague. Despite the easing of travel restrictions to and from Eastern Europe, only about half a dozen passenger trains use this particular border crossing each day, and loadings are generally very modest. The main railway attraction at Gmünd is its narrow gauge steam. Gmünd Motive Power Depot is home to three of these 084 Engerth type locomotives, all still in the capital stock of Austrian railways. A fourth one is also kept at the depot by a local preservation group. These unusual locomotives with their articulated tender were built between 1906 and 1908 by Krauss in the city of Linz. Originally, they were designed for the Mariazell branch, but they spent only a few years there because the line to Mariazell was electrified in 1911. <coughs> Normally, the locomotives have no booked work from Monday until Friday but they have a regular diagram on summer Saturdays, Sundays and bank holidays, hauling tourist trains on the branch to Grossgerunks. The narrow gauge station at Gmund is just across the road from the main line station and there's plenty of time for the crew to oil round 39902 as they wait for the first passengers before setting off to Grossgerungs. Progress on the branch is slow. The locomotive has a nominal maximum speed of 40 kilometers an hour but on this stretch even that seems a little optimistic. The schedule in any case allows nearly two hours to cover 43 kilometers. The branch meanders through undulating, but by Austrian standards, unremarkable scenery. The population here is sparse, and it's difficult to see how the line could ever have made money. Today, though, it's a popular venue for day trippers, savouring the delights of a long forgotten railway age. A very different kind of narrow-gauge railway threads its way through the Urcherland region of Austria from Zankt Pölten to Mariazell. The Mariazellerbahn is unusual not only because it's electrified, but also because the class 1099 locomotives in use today are the original ones built for the line between 1909 and 1914. This makes them over 80 years old. 15 of the original 16 class 1099 locomotives survive to date. Eight of these carry names of local or regional significance. Although they were substantially reconditioned in the early 60s, the survival of the 1099s to the present day is nothing short of extraordinary.
The route involves some spectacular curves and gradients, especially at the southern end, where it rises to a summit of nearly 900 metres above sea level. The line is single track throughout, although there are crossing loops at most of the intermediate stations. The tiny halt of Wienerbrück Josefsberg is just one of many excellent starting points for walks in the scenic Urcherland. Maria Zellerbahn was opened in stages between 1898 and 1907. Electrification began almost straight away and a full electric service was introduced in 1911. In fact, this attractive railway was one of the first in the world to be electrified on the system of 6,500 volts AC single phase. And in its early days, it attracted worldwide interest. Among the many celebrities who came to have a look was the Emperor Franz Josef I, himself travelling behind one of these very locomotives. Today, the regular passenger service consists of one train an hour between Zankt Pilton and Laubenbach Müller, with a roughly two hourly service on the rest of the line to Maria Zell. One of the more important intermediate stations is Obergrafendorf. Here, connections are made with the diesel-worked narrow-gauge line to Wieselberg. The facilities at Obergrafendorf are typically well-kept and well-used. The Class 1099s are well-maintained, too, at the narrow-gauge workshops in Zankt Pölten. However, their long lives may soon be coming to an end. Austrian Railways has recently taken delivery of a prototype batch of narrow-gauge electric multiple units. And once they've proved themselves, the order for them, which will see the 1099s phased out, will be placed. It's a few moments of hectic activity at Obergrafendorf as the railcar service from the Wieselberg line connects with trains in both directions on the Maria Zellerbahn. Many of the passengers using this useful service are genuine commuters rather than tourists. Departure takes place on time for the final 12-kilometer stretch to Zankt Pölten. The rather garish livery of the first coach is promoting the attractions there. Zankt Pölten Alpenbahnhof is the main operating centre for the Maria Zellerbahn. This class 1099 is just returning to the depot after arriving from Maria Zell with a rake of empty stock, some of which still carries the original brown livery of the line. Another relic at Zankt Pölten is this class 2092-060 shunter, built during the Second World War. The diesel line from Obergrafendorf to Wieselberg is worked mainly by single class 5090 railcars. These took over from loco haul trains in 1995 and provide a more cost-effective service for this sparsely populated area. Austrian Railways regards all its narrow gauge lines as Category C, which means in theory that they're threatened with closure. However, all the services are particularly well used by commuters, and the building of new stock like these railcars and the electric units for the Maria Zellerbahn would seem to make any imminent closure plan unlikely. Being situated literally at the centre of Europe makes Austria one of the easiest countries to get to, with good international connections by air, rail and road, whatever the weather. Having said that, it's a long drive from the UK, and most people will either travel by train or fly direct, and then possibly hire a car. 
When shopping around for airfares, bear in mind that while it's not always possible to fly direct to Innsbruck or Vienna from Manchester or Glasgow, it is often possible to pick up very realistic fares by shopping around and changing flights in Holland rather than London. Accommodation isn't always as easy to find as you might expect in a country that relies so heavily on tourism. In many areas, the availability of hotels and even the more reasonably priced guest houses tend to be highly seasonal. This means if you're travelling outside the main summer or ski seasons, the full range of accommodation may not be available. Usually this is not a major problem in the alpine areas, as there will be at least one hotel open in most villages. However, when travelling to the east or north of Austria, seasonal closures will be more widely felt, as there's a distinct lack of choice in these less touristy areas. Travelling around Austria by train is easy. The public timetable is well laid out and many people at the larger stations speak English. Most main stations also carry plenty of literature in English, including a useful guide to steam services. The whole system operates as an impressive integrated whole, with connections between standard and narrow gauge being maintained. OBB offer four-day regional passes, which are good value. Driving throughout Austria is also a pleasant alternative, particularly in the more rural areas. When phoning home, the best advice is to use a BT charge card, although one potential problem here is that you will still be charged for the call at local call rates if you use a public phone. So remember to keep some change with you. To sum up, Travelling in Austria is a pleasant experience. The national food is certainly acceptable by English standards, although eating out is a little more expensive than at home. And the people are friendly. All in all, you should have an enjoyable break at any time of year. About 80 kilometres southwest of Vienna at Puchberg is the fascinating Schneebergbahn Rack Railway. This 042 tank engine, Austrian Railways Class 999, is one of five of its type based here at Puchberg for working the line. Whilst the engine is remarkably ancient, dating back to the building of the line in the late 1890s, the lightweight coaches are deceptively modern. In fact, they were built nearly 100 years later, so as to fit in more passengers than their wooden predecessors. Before it sets out on its 80-minute journey, Number 99901 will have its tender replenished from a standard gauge wagon waiting on the adjacent track. The train service on the Schneeberg Bahn today varies according to demand. At busy periods, there can be departures every 10 minutes or so in an Atlantic Coast Express style. The track is metre gauge, rather wider than the more usual 760 millimetres narrow gauge in Austria. The Schneebergbahn was one of the first lines in the world to be built solely with tourism in mind. It was open to passengers in September 1897, just two years after the first contracts for building it had been let. The Schneebergbahn covers a horizontal distance of 10 kilometers. Over that distance, it climbs from a starting point at Puchberg of just under 600 meters above sea level to a summit which lies nearly 1,800 meters above sea level. This makes it the highest OBB railway in Austria. In these times of heightened environmental awareness, it's good to see that the railway makes less impact on the countryside than an equivalent road would do. In fact, the Schneeberg mountain isn't served at all by road. Most visitors take the train up the mountain and then walk down. Standard gauge steam in Austria is limited to occasional specials at weekends. Some run by Austrian railways and others by private operators. 527612 is heading a special out of Wiener Neustadt on its way to Aspang. The 
Class 52, a German austerity design introduced in 1943, is the most numerous steam loco class in preservation. The line to Aspang is steeply graded, and hence the rather unphotogenic precaution was taken of using a Class 2143 diesel to assist. Coach preservation too is popular in Austria, with many vehicles carrying the pre-1970s standard green livery. A rather more unusual preservation item is this 242 tank loco, dating back to 1935. Among its curious features is a baggage compartment behind the cab. Coupled to a preserved diesel railcar trailer, the pair make a very unusual sight as they head for the summit tunnel on the famous Zemmering Pass. To the southeast of Vienna, there are no less than four separate railway links between Austria and Hungary. This line, ambling through the Erdenberg Hills, provides a direct link between Wiener Neustadt and the Hungarian town of Schopron. Formed by a single class 5047 railcar, this particular train will only run as far as the last Austrian station before the Hungarian border, Leupersbach Schattendorf. Brand new rolling stock like this has transformed the service quality on many Austrian secondary lines. Another Austro-Hungarian link is this privately run line between Ebenfurt and Schopron. This line is owned and operated by the Raab Erdenberg Ebenfurter Eisenbahn, a company based partly in Austria and partly in Hungary. It being more usually known by the initials of the Hungarian name for the company, GYSEV. It carries a large volume of international freight traffic, mostly in mixed consists, such as this Hungarian-bound service passing through the station at Baumgarten. The electrification of this link was completed in 1984. Today, all border crossings between Austria and Hungary are closely guarded, mainly to prevent illegal immigrants from Eastern Europe using this back door to enter the European Union. The motive power for freight services is a small fleet of class V43 Bobo Electrics. Dating back to the 1960s, they originally belonged to Hungarian state railways and were purchased for use on this line in the 1980s. The GYSEV also operates a non-electrified line between Neusiedl and Ferta Schent Miklos. This line passes through one of Austria's most prosperous wine-growing regions, the Burgenland, and there's plenty of opportunity to buy samples locally for those who might be interested. Passenger services are worked by a mixture of Austrian Railways diesel units and units owned by the GYSEV. This recently purchased two-car set comprises of former Austrian railway stock built in the 1950s. Typical of the well-kept intermediate stations is Mönchhof Hauptturn, where a healthy volume of both passenger and freight traffic is handled. Freight is loaded and unloaded from a single through siding, located just beyond the passenger platforms. These wagons have brought cement from Slovakia. The daily trip working from Neusiedl is hauled by one of the 13 Class M44 locomotives owned by the GYSEV. These are a standard Eastern European product and were built in their thousands during the 1950s and 60s.
formation as long as this isn't unusual on this stretch of line, even though it serves such a sparsely populated region. After a brief discussion with the station manager, the train crew can start the complex process of shunting the freight siding. Several manoeuvres will be necessary because the wagons that are ready to go are not those at the near end of the siding. This hopper wagon is loaded with barley, destined for San Martino in Italy. Weidhofen and der Eeps to the southwest of Amstetten is the starting point for the splendid Eepstahlbahn narrow gauge system. The standard gauge station at Weidhofen and der Eeps lies on the secondary line between Amstetten and Klein Reifling. This three car class 4030 unit is forming an all station service from Bischofshofen to Amstetten. The class 4030s were built in the 1960s for suburban services around Vienna, but are now widely scattered and they work many rural lines such as this one. Weidhofen also enjoys some through services to and from Vienna. This class 1141 is setting out with a limited stop service from Vienna to Bischofshofen by the rather roundabout route of Amstetten and Zeltztal. The narrow gauge platform at Weidhofen is conveniently tucked away on the other side of the main station forecourt. Many trains, like this service arriving from Ibsitz, are now worked by class 5090 railcars. Of course, narrow gauge services are timed where possible to connect with trains on the standard gauge line. Despite the arrival of new railcars, some trains on the Ibstalbahn are still loco-hauled, using a small batch of class 2095 locomotives allocated to Weidhofen depot. This one being rather appropriately named after its hometown. One reason for retaining loco hold services is the need to provide van space for both luggage and bicycles. Here, once again, passengers with bikes are actively encouraged by Austrian railways. The 54km route from Weidhofen to Lunz am See begins with the first of many viaducts and bridges. This one, which crosses a small tributary of the River Ips, being the most major structure on the route. Dieselization of the line took place in 1962, when the first of these class 2095s arrived, and today the 54km journey takes about an hour and a half. Once, the trains ran all the way to Kienberg Gamming, but today the present-day terminus of the Ibstalbahn is Lunz am See. The pleasant station here has recently had a considerable amount of money spent on its upkeep and now even includes a rather splendid new toilet block. Predictably though, passenger levels on weekdays are somewhat sparse. The most unusual feature of the Ibstalbahn today is its freight traffic. Unlike other Austrian narrow gauge lines which carry standard gauge wagons on transporters, the Ibstalbahn uses narrow gauge wagons. 
All the traffic carried here, including the timber, will have to be transshipped by crane into standard gauge wagons when the train reaches Weidhofen. It isn't possible to use transporters because of weight and loading gauge restrictions on the line. Obviously, the extra handling needed to transship loads makes the operation rather cumbersome, and yet there is still enough business to fill two or three train loads each week. The main traffic is outgoing timber, but the railway also carries various kinds of packaged goods, including local deliveries of beer. There are loading points at several of the intermediate stations, as well as Lunds am See. In most European countries, an operation like this would have been abandoned years ago, and the traffic would simply go by road, at least as far as the nearest standard gauge railhead. The survival of narrow gauge freight on the Ibstalbahn is certainly one of the wonders of Austrian railways. Although Lunds am See is now a terminus for Austrian railways, the section beyond here to Keenberg Gamming is still used by a preservation group on summer weekends. The Urcherland Express is hauled by an 062 tank engine, which is as old as the line itself. Although the line between Lunds am See and Kienberg Gamming was originally built as part of the Ibstalbahn, its character is quite different from the rest of the system. The steepest gradient on the line is a punishing 1 in 32 as it rises high above the valley floor to cross the watershed between the Ips and the Erlauf. Austrian Railways closed this stretch of line in 1988, almost exactly 100 years after it was first opened, a preservation group was quickly formed with the intention of saving the line. Its second opening took place in 1990, ensuring that passengers can once again enjoy to the full the exhilarating scenery of the Ucherland. do hope that you've enjoyed this look at the unique railroads of this fascinating country. Bye for now. by the mountainous alpine areas. But as we shall see during the course of this program, Austria has much more to offer than dramatic scenery. The characteristic Austrian network is comprised of a highly integrated system, utilizing both standard and narrow gauge operations. It also features many lesser known but equally interesting areas, including cross-border operations in the east.
We'll also be looking at the considerable amounts of narrow-gauge freight which still survive against all odds, conveyed on both transporter wagons and narrow-gauge wagons. Austria also operates and sees many distinctive international services, giving additional interest to a country already packed with railway appeal. Situated at the centre of Europe, Austria is a natural railway crossroads. A good starting point for any visit is the capital, Vienna, with its highly developed railway system, which includes four mainline termini and an extensive network of local and suburban lines. Vienna is also one of the great tramway capitals of Europe, with plenty of superb street action to interest everyone. In fact, it has the second biggest tramway system in the world, beaten only by St. Petersburg in Russia. The Südbahnhof, or South Station, is served by three separate tramway routes. The original Südbahnhof was flattened during the Second World War and was replaced in the late 1950s by this rather unglamorous building, which is unusual in having two sets of terminal platforms sit on of the latest Class 1014 electrics. As far as rail freight is concerned, Austria has one of the most enlightened transport policies in Europe. In particular, there is still commitment to a complete wagon load network. And for those customers who don't happen to have a private siding, there are still literally hundreds of public freight terminals. Here at Zittenberg, the main line has recently been straightened out and diverted through a new tunnel. The old route, visible in the background, which has been retained for local passenger traffic, follows the course of the River Danube and is subject to a number of speed-hampering curves. Parcels and mail traffic is still big business for Austrian railways. The bicycle slogans on these vans are advertising that, unlike in certain countries, bicycle traffic is actually encouraged here. One of Austria's many rural narrow-gauge branch lines is the 54-kilometre-long branch from Zell am See to Krimmel. The branch starts with some unusual dual-gauge track as it leaves the main line here at Zell am See. Hello and welcome to Railroad Journeys Around the World. In this volume, we'll be looking at the distinctive railroads of Austria. Situated right at the heart of Europe and blessed with plenty of spectacular scenery, Austria has always been a very popular destination for generations of people with an interest in railways. For many, the Austrian railway network is best symbolised situated at right angles to each other. This train, hauled by a Class 1044 electric, is just arriving at the southern platforms on the two-hourly intercity service from Salzburg via Villach.
Setting out from the southern platforms of the Südbahnhof, this class 4010 unit is forming an intercity departure to Grass and Spielfeldstrasse. Austrian Railways has a fleet of 29 of these six-car intercity electric multiple units, which, despite being introduced 30 years ago, still look up-to-date and modern. One of the busiest freight routes in Austria is the Westbahn main line, which runs for much of its journey along the Danube Valley from Vienna to Linz, and then on to Germany and Switzerland. On this stretch of line, long mixed freights pass through literally every few minutes, many of them destined for Vienna Kladering Yard. Block formations are common too, such as this trainload of petroleum, hauled by the last few kilometres from Zellamsee to Bruckberg, enjoy a comparatively intensive shuttle service, worked by a single Class 5090 rail bus. Through trains to and from the end of the branch at Krimmel are often made up of longer formations. This one has an extra coach at the rear for luggage and cycles. But the Krimmel branch doesn't only carry passenger traffic. As with many narrow-gauge branch lines in Austria, there is also regular revenue-earning freight traffic, with standard-gauge wagons being conveyed on narrow-gauge transporters. locomotive and transporter wagons are coupled to each other by means of rigid connecting rods, which also carry the continuous air pipe to operate the wagon brakes. The cost of underwriting an operation like this is obviously considerable, but the Austrian government is clearly committed to keeping as many lorries off the roads as possible, and a mere change of gauge is no reason to stop using the railway. Class 2095s are a mixed traffic locomotive.